morning, Zoomers and Zoomettes and everyone else I can see. Uh, good morning, welcome, and happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We made it through another week of winter. Uh, pictures and catchers are going to start at the end of this week, so spring is right around the corner. But to me, it's always spring when we go and get together in here. I really appreciate it being here today. Please join me with our choral intro. Let's continue the voice. Join me in our call to worship. Cry out. We come before God because Christ, the one who transforms us, is with us in front of God's throne. God accepts us and loves us. 
No matter what you've done or haven't done, God loves you. Christ, our adopted brother, is by our side embracing us in God's love. Knowing this, let us confess our sin to God, our loving parent, as a sign of our repent repentance. Let us all together recite our music prayer of confession. On this day of brightness and your transforming power, O oh God, we confess our missteps. We confess the way we try to fit you in small boxes rather than embracing your unimaginable majesty. We confess that, for the fellow humans, we often put ourselves first. We seek after worldly goods and recognition rather than seeking first your kingdom here on earth. We are deeply sorry for the way we have turned from you, O oh God. Forgive us, we pray. Amen. Friends, know that it is in Christ. And it is Christ who hears our prayers. It is Christ who brings our petitions to God. It is Christ who gave his life for us. You are in him and you are made new. Every single day you are a new creation through Christ. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now is our moment, now that we've confessed our sin and we've heard the good news that we are forgiven, we can now share the peace of Christ with one another. So the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Clear our, clear our minds and center ourselves to hear God's word for us today. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Word of God make flesh, inspire us with your holy scriptures today. Clarify and magnify the truth that lies within the readings today. Help us to see and proclaim your goodness and presence in our world today. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 50. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. For him is devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Thank you, Mike. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 10. Now, this entire service, in fact, this entire church day, is modeled around this reading that we're going to hear, because it's Mark's account of the transfiguration of Jesus. And today is, as it's on your bulletin, Transfiguration Sunday. So, please listen to the Word of God with me today. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking 
with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He, he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had, had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Holy Jesus, you were transfigured on that mountain for three of your disciples, and you transform all of us. May we see you in your divine life and glory through this message today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some people in the church like to talk about mountain top experiences. When they bring these up, they're not talking about the ones in the Bible, though there are many. They're talking about experiences where people have a clear moment of divine connection. They don't all happen on literal mountaintops, but they definitely can. I don't know about you, but being in nature, away from the busyness of day-to-day -day life, does help me to be more present with God. When I was growing up, I went to a camp every summer with my church. And now I have incredibly fond memories of this Presbyterian camp in the mountains of Northern California near Yosemite National Park. Lots of fun playing games and going on hikes, being with my church friends all the time, and feeling independent because I wasn't with my family. I started going to this camp the summer before fourth grade, and I didn't go every summer after that, but I went almost every summer. There was one year in particular that comes to my mind as one of these mountain top experiences. It was the summer before 11th grade, and it was after we just played a night game. I was walking back to my cabin with some of my friends, and we were in this open parking lot. There were no trees covering, because there's all the trees in this park, in this camp. We were in the open parking lot, and I looked up at the stars, and I felt amazed at the stunning beauty of it. I felt so small and yet so affirmed in God's love for me. I was on a mountaintop away from light pollution and smog, right? I could see the sky and all the stars much more clearly than I could at home. And I've been to this camp before. I've seen the starry night sky before at this camp and in other places. But in this moment, it was transformative. I knew God was close at hand. God wasn't just looking down at me from afar. God was right there with me. I remember the vastness of the sky and it representing the vastness of God's love for me specifically. I was raised in a church. I knew of God's immense and powerful love. But in that moment, I felt it for me specifically. This is a mountaintop experience. The psalm reading today speaks to the power of creation to proclaim God's presence in our lives. Creation is God's artistic work at play. And on the whole, our culture is becoming more and more cut off from nature. 
A good thing about living in Sussex County is the wide array of nature at our fingertips, right? Of course, there's farms and open land, but we're also close to forests and great hiking and camping spots. The church right here we are is only 10 miles from the highest point in all of New Jersey and its large state park that surrounds it. So there's plenty of places close at hand to be surrounded by nature. But for most of us, much of our days are spent inside. There are exceptions, of course, but as a cultural whole, this is the case. There's even a name for it, nature deficient disorder. It isn't a recognized condition, but it has a name. So you won't find it in like the big book of disorders that psychologists have, but it's been named. So to me, this begs the question, how can we still have mountaintop experiences without being on literal mountains? So let's keep that question in the back of our minds as we jump into our gospel text today. This transfiguration of Jesus allows his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, to see a different side of him. Listen to it again. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. Jesus was transfigured in front of them. His outer appearance changed and became dazzling. It was unlike anything they ever seen before. They could see the brilliance of God because of Christ's transfiguration. And in that moment, disciples were transformed. Now there's a big difference between transfiguration and transformation. Transfiguration is where there's a difference in things seen. Whereas transformation is when there's an entire change inside and out. This is a very powerful image of how God is revealed in the world, right? Because in the transfiguration, the disciples could see Jesus's true self. He was transfigured so they could see his true self. So we have, we can see God revealed in creation and we can also see God revealed in images. So those are kind of two ways we can see God being revealed in our world today. And now I'm guessing these three disciples never forgot this moment. They were terrified, which definitely helped this mountaintop experience stay with them. But the majesty and greatness of this moment would have been memorable too. They had no idea what to do. And if I imagine myself as Peter in this story, it's no wonder he suggests building three dwellings or monuments to Jesus, Moses, and Elijah at that spot. He wants a clear and defined way to remember what just happened. They didn't have cameras or phones to capture the moment, right? They only had their memories of what their rabbi, their teacher, Jesus, they only had their memories of this change. And so here's the thing, they certainly don't understand it. And neither can we, right? If, if we're being honest, this miracle is beyond our understanding. It's beyond our realm of reasoning. That's how miracles work, at least in my experience. We just can't understand them or find a reason with them. Professor Melinda Quivick inspired me and answered a question I had when I read this quote from her. Jesus' transfiguration is not to be approached with the assumption that we can understand it. It means to draw us in toward what is abnormal, unnatural, like the burning fire that does not consume the bush, 
Moses' first encounter with Yahweh in Exodus. And like the and like the fire Elijah hoped for and received from God on the altar drenched in water to win the wager against the prophets of Baal, Elijah's story in 1 Kings 18. The transfiguration places Jesus in the lineage and honor of the two prophets who stand with him on the mountain. Now, the question I alluded to before I read that quote is a question of how in the world did Peter, James, and John know it was Moses and Elijah standing and talking with Jesus? It's not like they had name signs on and said, hey, I'm Elijah, hey, I'm Moses. And even if they did, Peter, James, and John couldn't read anyway, so it would have been a wash. So how in the world did they know? Well, I'm not exactly sure how they knew, but these two characters from the biblical narrative are our faith ancestors who also met God in unusual ways. God revealed God's self in undoubtedly clear and potent ways in both of their stories. For Moses, Moses is pretty familiar, right? For Moses, it was the burning bush that didn't burn up. God calls Moses to lead the people of Israel, Moses' ethnic kin, out of slavery in Egypt. So we have that story of the burning bush that doesn't burn. And then for Elijah, God sends fire down to complete a sacrifice to prove God's identity as true God for the Israelite people as compared to the other gods, fellow Israelites were worshiping from other people groups like Baal. So his is sort of a little less common, but it's of the prophet Elijah and him saying, God is true God, not this God you worship. And I know because God will send flames to light this altar on fire, even though it's totally soaking wet. And God does. Right? So we have these two moments in the Old Testament. And all three of these moments, so the transfiguration of Mark, and in these two pinnacle moments of faith and trust from the Old Testament, God is revealed in remarkable, undeniable ways. These revelations of God weren't necessarily well attended, but the stories were told and shared. In the case of the disciples, they waited until after Jesus' resurrection before they shared what happened on that mountaintop as Jesus told them to wait. And I think the same thing happens for many of us. When we have God moments, we don't often go out and just tell the world what happened to us. We don't share how God has been revealed to us. I can't speak for all of us, so maybe some of you share right away, right? But I know that I generally keep the information to myself, or for a really small number of people for a while, if not forever. Maybe I have a response of, like Mary, cherishing these things in her heart in the Gospel of Luke. Or maybe it's anxiety that people will think what I'm saying is weird or made up. And so I don't always share. But the stories we all have of the ways we've seen God revealed to us are valid, and they're stories worth sharing. Imagine if the three disciples never told the others what happened to them. Imagine if they let their fear and awe and speechlessness get in their way. What a shame that would have been for this incredible story of Christ's divinity to be lost in your memories. Your stories are like that too. Your stories are worth telling, even if it's just to your spouse, your best friend, or a trusted confidant. It is worth telling. And it doesn't have to sound anything like my mountaintop experience from the beginning, right? There are so many varied ways God has revealed to us. I've mentioned some examples of being revealed in creation, 
in images and in stories. Perhaps, for example, you saw a particularly beautiful sunset one day and you felt a sense of appreciation for the ways God sculpted the universe. Perhaps you had a conversation with a friend and you felt a sense of peace over something you've been worried about or questioning. Perhaps you have a memory of an unexplained and unexplainable moment in your life. All of these little nudges and thoughts could be moments of God's presence with you. They could be the Holy Spirit revealing God's plan or purpose or connection with you. So, can you have a mountaintop experience without being on an actual mountaintop? My answer is yes. And my challenge to you over this next week is to put on your God goggles and notice if you can see any ways God has been or is revealed to you. And then share that with someone. It's amazing what clarity sharing can bring. And sharing can also help both parties recognize more contact with our heavenly parent, the one who created us and is always with us. Even in our messy lives, God is with us and transforms us. Jesus was transfigured and we are transformed by him. Go out there and see with fresh eyes the way God is revealed in your life and how you can reveal God to others. Amen. Thank you, Captain. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed as Trinity and Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Father. Was crucified and dead in the earth. He ascended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now then we take time to share the good news and the hard news in our church family. I'm going to ask the folks in the sanctuary first before we go to Zoom. We have any joys and concerns this morning. Eric? Right. Yeah, I'll start with a couple of joys. Uh, well, last week, kind of a couple of prayers where my sister and my mother both ended up in the hospital. Um, my mom, due to her pneumonia, and my sister for something different, but uh, you know, they're both out and doing well. And actually, my mom, I don't know how she went in the hospital, spent the night in the emergency room, and they got out and was in better shape after she got in that emergency room. So, um, so thank you for your prayers. She's doing much better. That's good news. God have mercy here, our prayer. Jenny. <laughs> it's great. God mercy in our prayer. It's exciting time. Last week I reported about the cost that Zoom meeting I was going to have just to say it went great. We had a terrific time. Ten, ten guys showed up uh, and you know, shared we kind of updated each other on what was going on. And, and I got uh, an email back from several, but one in particular said, Thanks for doing this. Uh, it was uplifting, just what we needed to do during this time. 
online, and I felt the same way. So it was great. It was a really good class. Uh, um, I asked for uh, prayers of uh, traveling Murphy's for Kyle and I as we uh, attempt to get to Florida this week. Attempt to you. God's mercy. Tom, I see this on Zoom. Anyone on Zoom? Just unmute yourself. Arthur? Hi. We can hear you. Right. I didn't put my video on. What? Come on. I had something. There you go. Oh, no, it's not on. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to get my video on. There you okay. go. Okay. So I wanted to wish my dad a happy 90th birthday today. <laughs> birthday, Charlie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he's on. Uh, I was thinking we could do this after the post week. Yeah. He's already in my head. <laughs> I have something. Something. I have something. Go right ahead, Don. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, prayers for our friend Artie Brom. He's going to have quite a serious operation this coming week in his in his mid eighties. So he needs your prayers. Prayers for our friend George Lynch. He's still in rehab and uh, he needs our prayers. Thank you. Now that we have shared our joys and our concerns, let us lift them to God in prayer to you. Loving God, you transform us by your love and grace. You awaken within us the light of mercy, justice, and care. Help us and your whole church to reflect your transforming light into this world that desperately needs to see things in a clearer way. Immense God, your presence in this world is both vast and close. We pray that we can feel and experience this presence in our day-to-day -day life and that by being led by your presence, help us to extend your hands and feet to the people around us who are hurting, who are grieving, who are lonely, and who are suffering. We pray especially for Hardy as he has a serious operation this week. For George Lynch, as he continues to get better in rehab. We also pray for Linda and Powell God as they travel to Florida, or at least really travel to Florida to be there, that they may be safe as they travel. God of grace and truth, help our leaders in this country to listen to one another, to listen and truly hear. Help them find commonalities as they work for justice, mercy, and peace. We know as people and as your children, we have much more in common than we have differences. May our leaders come together to foster care for the least of these. Healing God, we also pray for this world. This world you created good and yet hasn't taken advantage of. This physical world is such a gift, and yet we don't often see it that way. Help all of us and all people around the world to take the beauty and preciousness of this world you created seriously. Transfigured Christ, we call on you today to help us see the world with fresh eyes. 
Help us to experience the people around us as you see them. We rejoice in the good things you and your people have transformed throughout our lives and our communities. We especially pray for Eric's sister and mother, who are now both out of the hospital, and especially for his mom, who is doing so much better. Thank you, O oh God, for that. And thank you for the successful Zoom meeting that Rich hosted with his fellow retirees. We are so grateful that you have an uplifting time together. And we thank you especially for Charles Lick. And how he has now reached this 90th birthday, a whole new decade. We thank you for the life he has experienced, the life he will yet to experience, whatever is to come. Help us, God, as your church here in the Sussex region to be your instruments of positive change, of kingdom power in this world today. We thank you, God, for your guidance and for your teaching. We especially thank you for words to pray when all else fails us. And so we now pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is now the time of our service where we respond gratefully to God's word in our lives through giving of our offerings. I forgot my bulletin, so let me go grab that so I can read up in what our prayer and all that jazz. Friends, we give back to God a portion of whatever we have, our lives, our skills, our possessions, and our time. We give back joyfully as response to the many ways God has transformed our lives and given us the true light to illuminate our lives. We can give in different ways at different times, and they are all important and worthy offerings. Now, with this in mind, would you please join me in our unison prayer of thanksgiving and dedication as preached in the bulletin and as on the slide before. Let's pray. Transfigured Christ, we offer these gifts in all different forms as a sign of our thankfulness for your power in our lives. Use them for the growth and strength of this church family and community. We know all that we have to offer is already yours. Thank you for blessing us with what we have. Use our gifts to benefit your kingdom and shine your light into the world. In Christ's name, amen. And as a custom, as I'm sure many of you have already done, you can leave your offering in the bowl back there. Or if you're online, you could mail in a check, you could give online offering, any of those ways help support the ministry of this church. So now with, with this in mind, as we prepare to leave and go and serve the world this Valentine's Day and in the weeks to come, what are some opportunities to serve or announcements you may have? I will start with the big one. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, which means Lent is here. Um, I know Sharon sent out uh, the bull. I think she's going to have a bull tonight already for Ash Wednesday. And um, if not, we'll definitely be on Tuesday, as well as a little flyer. If you're near the sanctuary, you have a little purple insert. Now, Ash Wednesday is different this year because it'll only be on Zoom. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it'll only be on Zoom. It's at 7 p.m. And because we will not be in the same place, there will not be an imposition of action. So you won't get the ax crossed on your forehead. What I'm inviting you to do instead is to have this little paper with you so you can have the action cross as a picture with you. 
Um, you can also put it at home, keep it on your phone to look at or whatnot. Um, and there will be, when we normally impose ashes, a chance for you to anoint yourself or loved ones and vice versa with oil. Any kind of oil works. Uh, olive oil is perfect. That's what we normally mix with the ashes. And so you can just put a little oil on your hand or on the forehead to get the same feeling and remembrance of ashes from a normal ash in the face. So that's my big announcement. I look forward to seeing you at 7 p.m. on Wednesday on Zoom. Janet. Is it announced you will be announced this is announced that flowers will be sent through today or for you factoring it from the congregation? Thank you. Be sure to take them all the time. And they're my favorite color. <laughs> Pink. This is an easier one. What? A uh, couple of things about the health center. First of all, uh, soup for the health center so far, everybody's giving us chicken noodles, so that's a safe choice. And the other thing is, right now, the health center is looking more than anything else for breakfast and cereals. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, another one. I do have to direct that. And pass it back. <laughs> I think we all know what you meant. We were all good. Oh, oh, oh. After you won't be able to take them. <laughs> <laughs> now they're a little far from me. Does anybody on Zoom have anything they want to share? Okay. Well, with that in mind, I think it's time for our closing hymn, which is God of Grace and God of Glory.
one piece. That is still on. Thank you, Linda. Hope you can.